What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyt, and I am back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action, spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color, playing as Odin. His name is the Rapple. His opponent today in the blue color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Matrius. This game is a game that was played between these two on the Vubli ladder. Classic rated games for the, for the um, mostly for the honor and the glory of it all, but but a little bit more so for um, those pixels that come with winning rated games. They're very important. If you get uh, a lot of pixels, your numbers become higher than everyone else's and eventually you can say that your pixel has number one on it. And then when you get number one, you just win and everyone else goes, you're the best. Uh, and that's why we play rated games. Uh, a bit of a really strange ghost lake spawn here. Um, the boars very much outside of the base. It looks like Rapple finds his boars. But Matrius does not find his balls, which is a little bit sad, but it is what it is. Um, and now we're seeing all the uh, all the goats getting found. Double Olsark for Rapple here. I love this place uh, for Odin. I think this is kind of exactly how I have to play the majority of the maps. Because one, you get all of the goats on the map, which is kind of important. It's kind of really big. But more importantly is you get those two Ulfsark. One, to get very uh, much all of the scouting action going on the map. The other one to build. Um, if you can see the entirety of the map, then you know exactly where to place your ravens. You're not having to guess. You're not going to have to micro that in the middle of the game when um, when you otherwise need to be doing other stuff that's more important. Um, and, and yeah, so that's it. The, the problem that does amount to it is sometimes you uh, forget to build a house, which is looking like Rapple is uh, forgetting to do so. I mean, if he starts it before the villager builds, he's fine and he does throw it down. So it's going to be completely fine. Going to come out in the right order when we see Matrius throwing down his own house over here. One thing you can try when you're playing against Odin, which isn't a terrible idea, is you put your house on the tree line that you're chopping wood from with an expected expectation that your opponent's going to burn it down. So you're sacking 50 wood and, what is it, 14 seconds for the build time of the house in order to get an extra two militia. So you get the two militia from your storehouse and you get the two militia from your house house, which gives four militia for 100 wood. And if you have any idea about what a militia costs, it says it costs 50 food, but it doesn't cost 50 food. Um, it costs zero food. Um, but more importantly, it is approximately worth 90% uh, of a militia. Now, the militia is is like, sorry, 90% of a hoplite. So that's that's 90 resources. So it's about 81 resources for a militia. And you get two of them. So the, they're very cheap if you're only paying 50 wood for them. So chucking as many buildings onto um, this tree line here as per sign can be a sneaky way to play around the early game forest fire and putting a lot of pressure onto your opponent and feeling really funky fresh about it. Now, the temple is coming down for Rappel. He's got a decently placed back gold mine here, though uh, sneaky raids can definitely come in here and cause some pressure, so we might need to see a wall on this location just to slow down those raids. There's a really beautiful wood line here for Rappel, uh, and his food mostly has been stolen by Matrius is Lua, another big reason to be picking Poseidon on, on this on this kind of map here, like the Ghost Lake, like your Alfheims, where the, where the hunt can be kind of low. If you uh, if you can come and grab all of your own food or just get lucky with the Lua um, stealing your opponent's hunt, you can you can feel fantastic about that. You can see there's only three caribou here. Uh, now the Great Hunt does give. Rapple an extra 750 food, but in this case, 600 food from the boars, because there's only two boars. And you probably got a couple of goat from it, so uh, it kind of evens out in terms of the archaic god powers. But if this was not Odin, it was like Thor, Thor would definitely be hurting right now, and the, uh, the Poseidon player would give a huge advantage. Uh, now we got the, uh, the temple up for Matrius. He's going up through Hermes. Fairly quick, fairly uh, fairly standard here. Uh, good amount of villagers on both. We've got seven villagers actually on the wood line. Uh, it looks as if this is possibly going to just be a standard, maybe Hippocon Toxodi start here for Matrius. One of these villagers a little bit confused about what he wants to do, but he finally does drop that wood load off there. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you go about seven villagers on, on or eight villagers on wood and only two villagers on gold, it kind of does indicate you you want to make toxodes. But it's also a possibility that he's going to take villagers off of wood and chuck them over onto gold after he builds the stable. So he could go mass stable here. Uh, Theseus just going to be harassing a little bit. What's the relic he's got here? He's got the Pygmalion's statue. This relic 
He's a, is it Relic is possibly the best Relic in the game. I think um, so. Just on the fact that it's really hard to kill your villagers. Uh, and if you can combine it with Skin of the Rhino, if you're right, it's it's, uh, it's pretty bonkers. There's the first stable kind of hiding them in the back, and he's going for two stables. I do wonder if we're going to see these villagers pulled off of the wood line here now that he's, uh, he's kind of all sorted out. Hippolyta's coming out. Probably no need to have seven villagers on on wood anymore, but we'll see. Uh, Rapple, on the other hand, he's got one longhouse up, one temple up, two longhouses. He's going to start making those raiding cavalry. Now, the big thing that happens for Odin players, which which um is which 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 is a big issue, is that in the early game it can be really hard to manage to make raiding cavalry from both longhouses and make dwarves. And you can see Rapple is now uh, he, well he has had a lot of zero percent on those longhouses and currently his town center is not doing villages. But one way around that is to simply just not build dwarves and get away with the fact that you can just build gatherers and gatherers gather at exactly the same amount of resources as a greek villager does on the gold so you're not even behind in terms of gold or resources if you do in fact you're in front because you're saving 70 gold on the dwarves uh just a small little uh tidbit there if you own players want to try something a little bit more out of the box a little bit less standard a little bit better maybe even maybe not who knows uh, we've got Raffle now pushing forward with his raiding cavalry. The Valkyrie's been forced back. We've got the Ankh of Ra coming in for Matrius as well. That's going to help out a ton. Not having to put a villager onto the temple in order to get that favor trickle is kind of huge because it means he gets an extra um, like 10 resources every 10 seconds or one resource a second, uh, which is essentially what Ankh of Ra is giving him, which is really nice uh, in terms of the early game you see these raiding cavalry trying to get in here not going to be able to do too much uh, i'm really interested as to why matrius has placed his stables back here it doesn't mean that the raiding cavalry aren't going to be able to sort of run around the back of matrius's base and it does keep those stables very very safe but they're super far away from the action and while he does have speedy hippocon it being so far away means he's you know, it's going to be a little bit slow. We do see the Raiding Cavalry now making their way over onto this berry bush. It looks like Rapple might have an inkling to go there, but he could just pop in and pick off these villagers on the wood line here. And Matrius already pulling back here. He pulls off the, the wood, going to be pulling these villagers away. Exactly what he needs to do, one at a time. Very, very uh, slow and methodical, moving at the right points here. The villagers pulling off of this wood line. Can just jump into this tower if he needs to. It looks like he does do that in time. And the stable, or sorry, the longhouse, here of Rappel does get taken out. Now Matrius going to be sneaking around looking for some more uh, pressure points here but Rappel is starting to get medium raiders out. He's got the three longhouses still uh, and Hippolyta Theseus pushing in. Not going to really be able to find all too much. The defensive nature of this base here from Rappel is just really good. Might be able to take the watchtower down. We're yet again seeing these raiders trying to get a bunch of damage done to Matrius's gold economy here. Matrius is struggling a little bit for gold. So he really needs to get some units over here to help out. But the raiding cavalry hurting a little bit. We do see the forest fire over here onto this location. A bit of a a bit of an iffy move here from Rappel because this is going to completely open up this side of the uh, of his base here uh, for attack, which is also opening up this gold mine for attack as well. Not going to be able to build a wall over here or anything. And, and it's going to be tough for Rappel to hold on to that second gold mine at about the 9 minute 30 second mark. We are seeing Matrius push back in here yet again, taking a little bit of a good trade. Does lose a lot of HP on his units, turning around, fighting yet again that uh, Centaur in the back doing some good damage and Rappel just hanging around his, uh, his flaming trees for the uh, for the moment here. But got to be careful with those units here. Don't want to run into the base just yet. Yep, a little bit a uh, little bit iffy as Rappel is coming back in with his own medium raiders. He's going to be able to clean this army up very, very easily here. Especially if he can get those Herso onto that uh, onto that center, which they are currently queued to hit that one there if Matrius doesn't escape here. Nice little micro there putting the uh, the Santar into the back. Just going to be sneaking into this uh, into this forest here, trying to get as uh, equal of a trade as he possibly can. But it's looking like all of these units of Matrius will get sniped here. We see the armor is now coming up for Matrius. His base fairly decently uh, situated. But the big problem for both players here is they're going to have to farm. There's a ton of goats here, actually. So it's kind of fine for Rappel, but Matrius sort of running out of goats. He has to start the farm transition. He's only got three villages on wood, so he's going to have to start putting villages over to wood. There's no real way that he gets to the heroic age here, uh, and that's going to be sort of a big issue. Unless he cuts, I don't think there's enough food here. 73, 
cuts, 140, 100. There is actually enough food here if he cuts production completely and just put, throws everything over to gold. Could potentially get to the rogue edge about 11 minutes or 11.30 here. Um, but we'll see. His Matri is taking this fight. He's, he's managing to take the fight in a very nice fashion. You can see so many of these Rappel units in the back not fighting, whereas the majority of the Hippocons were fighting. So he got a good trade before retreating away here. So it's nice, smart play here. If you want to avoid this, if you've got the, the stronger, or sorry, the more, more units, if you want to avoid this, cut your raiding cavalry into two groups and then move them into separate angles of engagement, exactly like this. One group, two groups, move two separate angles to engage your opponent and you're not going to have your raiding cavalry just bumping into each other at the end. We do see the raiding cavalry sneaking around. Going to be attempting to stop this gold mine from getting gathered from if we check the uh, Columbic upgrades we do have a pickaxe here the village are going to get uh, attacked here preventing the walls from coming up um, Rappel might want to just try and snipe this one not these walls here and just make sure this is going to be opened up as he can just push in here do we have thundering hooves we do have thundering hooves there is no spirited charge here for Matrix. he's only got 10 favor in the bank right now the hippocons trying to spam out as best as he can he's got 103 of 105 population here uh compared to rapple who's got 98 of 115 the village has pulled off the gold mine gonna be enough to force rapple out of here but rapple in a good position with thundering hooves with the odin regen here he can keep on moving in and out just take all those full HP raiding cavalry and keep swinging in getting some damage leaving those um, those wounded raiding cavalry uh, alive on the back here wouldn't be a bad idea but he's going to be moving around this side yet again looking for somewhere, something to attack and maybe take down this gate should be able to take it down fairly quickly see the raiding cavalry going after this villager actually going after the Hippicon I take it back he, he can snipe some Hippicon here it's not going to be bad but it's looking like this Hippicon is going to be able to trade one for one anyways as the raiding cavalry moving into Matrius's base the villagers trying to escape here and the raiders are not quite able to get a path block here they're going to be able to make a break for this sentry tower over here and are completely fine and safe here but Matrius getting a good pick here meanwhile we've got the Hippocon moving forward going to be looking for a gold mine but we've got Rappel all the way over here gra grabbing this goblin lots of these dwarves need to be on gold here but it looks like uh, maybe Rappel needs the extra wood to to uh, make farms or something get shaft mine I don't know good raid though pushing off this wood line Matrius very much is going to be struggling for the wood at this point as he's moving over onto this tree line now lots of idle villagers who need to be building farms do we have plow up we don't have plow so struggling to really get those economic upgrades you see the hippocon moving in we'll see that the gold mine is gone so Matrius knows there's kind of only two places on this map this is one of the classic ghost lake maps with only uh, four large gold mines so two two large gold mines apiece and if we check Matrius's line of sight here, he's checked this one out. He's seen this one. He knows where to attack if he can attack. Uh, and he's got Copper Mail here. Copper Mail, absolutely huge in this matchup. These uh, these Hippocon, ne now nearly the same uh, hack armor as the Medium Raiders. And they have a ton more HP up at 165 HP. So they're going to be uh, a big, big deal to deal with uh, against these Raiding Cavalry who do not have any armor upgrades at this point. So Rappel... Moving in with his Raiders, going to be attacking Matrius here, but Matrius is going to be happily taking this fight, having the Copper Mail here, ready to fight back the Theseus. He needs to get onto that Valkyrie. Don't want to lose that one without doing a significant amount of damage to the hero, uh, sorry, to the myth unit. As he's moving in, we've got this villager trying to move forward, going to throw up some more wooden walls. We've got some now Ulfsark coming in as Rappel wants to continue this push, wants to get the Gold Staff onto Matrius. He knows if he wins this fight here, he can potentially win the game, but Matrius, 96 population to Rappel, 107 population, still very, very close in this fight, but Rappel is falling very quickly here in the population. We've got some more stables coming up in archery range now coming through for Mat Matrius. It might not be a bad idea to throw down some military academies here. One, to get medium infantry for when he needs to be getting some militia out, but uh, but two, more importantly, making those hoplites to mix in uh, can be very, very strong against these uh, these units that uh, Rappel is making here, but the walls are kind of up. He still left the gap here because he can't quite get this. Look at the death here. The death on this battlefield is absolutely huge, uh, and Matrius still pull getting pushed back by Rappel, who is very very, very much uh, got a ton of resources right now. However, the big problem for Rappel is just about out of goats. He's got 283 wood left in the bank. So that's that's about uh, four, or four, four farms, maybe five farms uh, that he can make here. 
uh, and that's a lot of villages that are just chilling here. 11 villages, so a lot of those are going to go idle. Might be worth building an ox cart, sending them over to just to this wood line. Oh, he's got a wood, wood here, so we can just send those villages over to the wood. Make sure he gets those farms coming out. Lots of villages on gold right now. I can take some of those off of gold onto wood or onto food here. As you see those gatherers coming off of the gold mine now, moving over onto the berry bushes. And Rappel just consistently pushing in here. But I think Matrius is going to be able to hold this position here. The villagers pulled off the line. Uh, and going to be helping out a little bit as well. The Raven gets sniped. The Valkyrie does go down. These Toxodes in the back doing tons of damage, but they need to be targeting down those those Ulvsark. They are not Lone Wanderer Ulvsark, so he can hold this position. Matry's pulling off the gold mine now, moving in to these her, uh, these Raiding Cavalry. Going to be helping out just a little bit. Rapple, 90 population. Matry's 68 population. Matry's going to be getting gold stuff. He, can, he can't really afford to be pulling these villages off of the gold mine right now. And, Ma and Rapple can just keep flooding this. He's got forward longhouses here. How the uh, economic, uh, the armory upgrades, still no armory upgrades. Villagers do not get that um, that copper mail upgrade, but it is looking like Matthew is going to be able to hold on to this uh, as as he's uh, kind of winning this fight now with the help of those villagers. We do see some ra random raid coming in here with a couple of Hippocon just running around here. Matrius hitting multiple positions at once. And here's the thing though. Rappel can keep taking these fights here because he's got control of this gold mine. So if he can just keep trading kind of evenly, he should be okay. Mattress with a lot of food in the bank. He pulls all of those villagers off of food onto gold. This is what separates Mattress from a lot of the other players here. He knows he does not need to just leave those villagers on food. He can just send them all over to gold. Maybe another um, storehouse here wouldn't be a bad idea to just increase that gold gather rate by a little bit. The Hippocon definitely going to be sniping a couple of these dwarf here as the dwarf just kind of chasing around the Hippocon as Matrius can just kind of put a, a bunch of flags here running around for the time being. We're seeing the Raiding Cavalry coming back in, but there's so many Toxodes here now. It's a little bit scary to be taking these fights with these Toxodes. Even a Santa coming into the mix as Rappel has to, or sorry, Matrius has to get pushed back. He has to retreat. He does have a bunch of those beautiful uh, meat shields in the front, but he needs to take these fights nicely if he's going to be taking them at all. And it, it is looking like he's kind of doing it. Rappel sitting 100 population to Matrius. is 90 population here. Village is getting pulled off of the gold mine yet again, forcing Rappel back the wall coming up as Matrius has had enough of Rappel pushing into his base here. Going to finish this wall off, have a little bit of a breather. How far is Rappel off in the uh, the Heroic Edge? He is super far away from the Heroic Edge right now. 11 villages yeah. on wood. Needs to take a lot of those off and build those farms now. The problem is he doesn't really have the space around the town center. One thing you can do is take these villages here, build the farms here around this town center and have the ox cart there for them to dump into that location. So when you get the town center, it's fine. The, the, um, the, the situation is already sorted out. There is a big problem with it in terms of getting raided on that location, but you know, you know, if you're constantly pressuring your opponent, you're probably not going to get raided all too much. We're seeing the Hippocon coming back in onto this gold mine, ready to hit this one. There is a throwing axe in here, but that's going to get sniped very, very quickly. And now with the walls up, these Toxodes can sit back and be very, very patient and very difficult to get attacked in this position here. Rapple needs to get to the Heroic Age. Matrius running out of food. He can put villages back onto these farms, but he's now going to be piling up on the gold, maybe taking villages off of the gold mine now. Wouldn't be a bad idea here. Uh, as he's just going to get too much gold economy and not the food that he needs uh, in order to get there. So we'll see what's happening. The Hippocon's sitting a little bit uh, a little bit back here. They need to move in and get some damage done. The Raiding Cavalry coming over. They do have that speed. We still don't see Spirited Charge in for Matrius just yet. Uh, but the Dwarves do turn around, start shanking this uh, Hippocon away. Uh, these Dwarves are, are very difficult little little buddies to pick off with the uh, extra 10 HP. It takes a little bit longer to pick them off. And they do still have the 8 damage to do so. And um, we do see that the Raiders coming back in. One Dwarf has been sniped. But these Hippocon should get pushed back. Uh, and Rappel's going to be happy about dealing with that raid for the time being. We're seeing Hippocon now coming over onto this town. And a good thing he built the uh, farms back here instead of where I said. Now, Matrius should be going to the Heroic Edge right now. He's going through Aphrodite. Rappel still just a little bit behind on the Heroic Edge, but he should be heading there fairly soon as well. Uh, just needs to maybe cancel Valkyrie, cancel uh, military production, and he'll be able to get there very soon. These villagers need to dump into the uh, ox cart, and he does. And Scardi will be on the way. Second town center now coming in for Matrius. That should secure this gold mine. However, the big problem for Matrius here... It's actually not a problem. He's got 
Siege Fire. I was going to say the big problem is that Frost will come in and it's going to freeze his villagers on the gold mine and his army, and then the town center will get taken down. Um, but with Siege Fire, he should be completely fine. Uh, so Rappel's going to have to hit a Thimble Winds the timing here on this location, which is um, means he kind of has to stay one town center here. But he does have all of the farms up. The gold mine is expired here, which basically means that. Man, you got to start thinking about a trade route here. When you're on your last gold mine, you got to start thinking about a trade route. So we'll see what Raffle's going to do. Does he throw up a market straight away over here and start the trade? Does he just go for the Mythic Age and try and make a big push with the Fimble Winter and maybe even take this gold mine back for himself? Um, does Matrius drop a market here? I don't see any market, let alone a Matrius market. Nope, not on the map here. Uh, and, yeah, not coming up just yet. And we are seeing Matrius happily starting to push forward. He's got the Nimian line. He's got the Toxodes. He's got the Hippocon. These dwarves very much going to be a difficult thing uh, for Rappel to hold and defend. He does have the Frost here. He's going to have to use the Frost as he does chuck it down. He's going to move in, start taking these down. Will we see the ceasefire here or not is the question. Not being able to use Frost on top of villages as well is going to be absolutely huge. Huge, though a lot of these units will fall. This is the power of Frost. It's almost worth it just to cease fire regardless because you know that the damage dealt is going to be so big to your army that you could potentially lose it. Um, you see the Frost Giant chasing this Nemean Lion down. The Nemean Lion has 4.8 speed, does outspeed the Frost Giant by a whole 1.0 speed. So it's going to be able to get away from it and feel fine about his decisions in life. Now the Ulf start coming in. We've got heavy infantry here. This is so key in these fights. Having heavy infantry is huge. There's heavy Hippocon here and medium Toxodes. Rappel, uh, sorry, Matrius, sorry, will start trying to retreat here. Uh, but he will try and take this fight. He does have the Nemean Lions, but will it be enough with those Frost Giants there to pick them off? You can see that he's already tasking those Frost Giants to use their special abilities onto those Myth Units. And that's going to force Matrius to cast that ceasefire, pull back and re group here we see the third town center coming up but still no trade route set up by either player and you can see we've only got for rapple we've only got 3600 gold here for matrius we've only got 4600 gold here but rapple is going for the mythic age i think going for uh ragnarok here would be the best idea because he can just move in and get a gold staff he doesn't have to even think about it. He's going through tier though. Tier's a little bit more risky. We'll see if it's going to work out or not. Matrius, on the other hand, very short on resources, on food. He's gone for his third town center. And I'm not sure he's going to really be able to hold this. He could just build the market here in the back corner and send a trade to this town center if he needs to defend against uh, uh, the Ragnarok. But it's a Thimble Winter coming in. Matrius is going for a fourth town center. He's sneaking the fourth town center i don't think that this is going to be great for him because he's going to be behind on the tech he's going to have no economy to build villages or build army the units from rapple are so strong he's got so many ulf sark here and rapple can get an immediate berserker gang um if he wants to uh which is going to make these ulf sark so brutally strong uh, but it is looking like Rappel has to pull back here for the time being. These Ulfs are getting a little bit confused about where they want to go. Must have accidentally hit stop command or something. And Rappel will uh, pull back. But the Frost Giant should be able to clean up all of those Nemean Lions as well if he wants to fight. Rappel kind of needs to get out... Um, a, a, a hill fort here but he just he just hasn't managed to do it we see one frost giant hit one of those naming lines another frost giant hit the other one and we have this third one that is uh unfortunately using his special on the wrong location here uh big problem for matrix in this fight and with with withholding the uh frost giant situation is that this is defender's advantage for rapple he's going to be spamming ulf Sark into this location every time one dies another one will replace it there is the fimble winter let's see matrix's economy right now he's got 150 of 160 population the army here of matrius taking a lot of fantastic trades imagine ragnarok here this is potentially a big big mistake from rapple but we'll see will matrius's economy get taken down so much zero villages currently gathering for another 15 seconds but rapple has to pull back and 
Lady. Now we're seeing Matrius target down the dwarves here with his Nemean lions, happily still fighting this with those Toxos. Now we've got a pacifist coming in to help out. We do still have some raiders in this fight, but Matrius has to pull back now. 130 of 160 population. The villagers back to work. Uh, but uh, the chaos in Matrius' base has been felt right now. You still have to wait like another 30 seconds or something, or maybe like 20 seconds or something for the resources to really start coming in as well because the villagers don't drop them off instantly and they'll all pop in very, very quickly. But now Rappel is going to be able to make a really, really big push and we'll see, will he make anything happen with it? Uh, Rappel's still making Frost Giant, so he's not going for Berserker Gang. Uh, and he does manage to snipe that final Nemean Lion here. And we do still have 3,000 gold in this gold mine. Still no market set up for Matrius. No real plan to make sure he's got gold in this game. Uh, Matrius has got the four town centers, so he just needs to hold here, basically. So if he can just start the trade route, uh, he'll be in a, in a decent position here because... Uh, because Rappel is out of gold completely. Rappel's gold mine is completely uh, gone here. If we check out Rappel's economy. Zero villagers on the gold right now. Where has he sent those dwarves? He sent them onto wood. He's moved all of the villagers over to wood, and Rappel is just going for it here. Does he have the trade started? He is starting the trade. It's an awful, awful trade route. Only one market here as well. If you're ever in this position where your gold mine runs out, build two markets, build three markets. I don't care. You need to get the trade starting here. Matrius holding on incredibly well here. 100, uh, sorry, wrong person here. 91 population not holding on well at all. The villagers pushed off this gold mine. Matrius with no gold left here. And Rappel does manage to force Matrius to to hit that tap out button gg well played by rapple somehow managing to finish this game off with zero gold income here as matrius gets pushed off the gold mine has no real way to get any gold how's the actual economy looking his economy is absolutely shot and the tier the fimble winter ends up being enough for Rapple to finish this game here. I do think that the Ragnarok would have been very much cleaner, but this was enough in this game. What a game here, just all out action for the entirety of this uh, of this game, just making it, making it very, very enjoyable to watch. Uh, let's just check the post game out and just look at that military here right now. 219 killed for Matrix, 173 lost, but this is the story here. Rapple's economy ginormously in front of Matrius. And that is the Norse economy here. This is just the Norse economy being so much stronger than Greek. If we check out these economic upgrades, you can see we've got winter harvest. We've got irrigation. Compare that to Matrius, who's got only irrigation. And he's also shorted himself on the shaft mine as well, which is a big, big problem there. But not having access to winter harvest is so huge because the food just comes in so very, very quickly. And you can see that that food is just so much. And you can see the gold difference as well just by having those those dwarves is, is so huge that there's just nothing that Matrius could really do, even with the civilian unit high there, uh, to keep up with the economy. But, you know, if Matrius had been, ma if Mat Matrius had managed to hold on to this gold mine here, maybe with some towers or something, if he could have managed to throw them up, then potentially he could stay alive in this game and keep fighting, make the market over here, start the trade over here, and be in a decent position to win this game. He does have the four town centers after all. He could even start a market down here and send it down to this side, completely out of the fight as he's got this town center here. Uh, but that's not what happened here. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.